Yes, he lived in town to weigh 440 pounds. Going up should be going in run. Going up should be having a little fun. I had a rest, he was darn old fool. Trying to put a saddle on a hump back mule. Up the road and across the creek. Can't get a letter but once a week. Going up should be going in run. Going up should be having a little fun. I guess they're a little different than the horse. Their ears are a little longer and a little different conformation. And my favorite saying is that um, anybody can ride a horse, special people ride mules. I've bought and sold mules. I've trained them, showed them, raised them for since I was 20. There are no two mules that are identical. You can take a horse and you can go find one just like the horse you had or the horse you want. Because a mule is a hybrid, um, genetically every one of them is unique and different. And even if he kind of looks like that mule you had that was so special, his mind is, is just totally different. I've never had two mules alike ever, not even similar. They just make a good individual, you know, to be around and buddy with, to either work in your harness or or to go riding in the mountains or trails or whatever you want to do with them. A mule bonds with a person uh, easier and friendlier than a horse will, but I'm a little prejudiced because I'm a mule person. They have endurance, they're sure-footed, they cost less to keep, they eat less, they live longer, less vet bills. I'll have you convinced to get a mule here in a minute. This event here is called the Oklahoma Mule Sale here in Ada, Oklahoma. It's a two-day show, it's a two-day sale, and uh, usually what they do is the uh, first day they'll have all their tack sale, they'll bring tack and harness and stuff like that, and we have vendors in the parking lot, and it's a traditional thing for them to come and, and set up their goods and, and, and sell their goods. It's probably the, the oldest uh, event uh, that we have here. I would say it was probably started in the early uh, 1990s, uh, having the mules here, and uh, uh, they have a spring and a, and a fall sale. You know, we could have a sale about anywhere because we've got a good name, but we like Ada because it is uh, kind of centrally located. The people from Texas can drive in here and Louisiana and New Mexico. It's a day's drive, you know, for a big area. And, and it makes it nice for a lot of people. I live in Texas. Um, at one time I came from La Mesa all the way up here twice a year, religiously. Um, always brought a load, bought a load, and usually what I brought up I didn't take home and I took different ones home than what I, what I brought. This is probably one of the biggest in this area for mules. I've been to some other mule sales. If you go back east you get to see a lot of draft and work mules. This one has a little bit of everything from just the, the common donkey and, and what were they thinking when they bred that to really fancy, nice, um, super, super kind of mules. And you, that's the joy of an auction. You never know what you're gonna find there and, and what the price is gonna be. And I, I've come to this, this sale, particular sale, since uh, about 23 years. I think it's been going 25 or 26 years. And I've bought probably over hundreds, two, 300 mules in, in my career here, uh, mules and donkeys and I've bought from just the plain old podunk to show quality. Um, some of them weren't show quality, but they went on to show and they beat some of the, the ones that were show quality.
Our parking lot's usually full. When it's here, uh, we have people come from uh, Kentucky, New York, uh, Utah, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, all you southern states. You know, it's kind of like a hobby and a sport. Uh, there's lots of different things that they do with these mules, you know, so it's a, it's a pretty neat deal to come and watch. Ada is like a, a big small town and it's all good country people. And even when you go to the restaurants and the stores, they understand livestock and mules and, and horses, and just about everybody's involved in the agriculture business here, and so it's, it's good country people, kind-hearted. Most of your mules are from a female horse or a mare crossed with a male donkey. Like if you wanted a big mare, you use a big jack, a draft jack, and a draft like the Clydesdales or Belgians if you want to get the big drafty kind of mules for heavy work. And if you wanted lighter work or want to do something performance, you use like a standard jack, which is small, smaller, 54, 55 inches, and cross it with your good riding mare, either a walking mare or a good quarter mare or box trotter, just whatever. The better the mare and the better the jack, the better mule you get. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the time, a mule is sterile. But there are recorded cases in today's world. A um, and M even has some that are not sterile. But the reason that they are sterile is they're a hybrid. And basically, when you take two of separate species, then the chromosomes don't exactly fit. So when you get the hybrid, the the genes will have they'll go everywhere. And so rarely will they fit to the point that they're not sterile. They say it's a man-made animal, I don't know, but if you leave them in a while, they're gonna, they're gonna cross, you know. They take the good and the bad out of the donkey and the horse both, I think. I mean, uh, maybe good traits in both of them, you know. They have a lot more stamina, a mule does, than a horse. A horse, you can literally run him into the ground. He will run till he just dies. And that mule is gonna conserve himself. And when he stops, you or nobody else will make him change. So sometimes they're easier to train than a horse, and you're like, wow, you know, this is great. And sometimes they're much harder. And just because they're really hard to train doesn't mean they're not gonna suit your purpose. I'm from a mule family, so I've always got along with a mule. And there's good mules and bad mules, just like there's good, bad of everything else. Maybe some of it's not there Maybe they're mistreated or something because they got longer ears and didn't give them equal treatment. They're a challenge. If you can train a mule to go rope, you can train anything to go rope. And I have two children, they're both grown now. Um, I raised them training and showing mules. And at one point they just wanted to go rodeo and they wanted to do horses. And I said, you know, if you can train a mule to do all of this, you can train them horses to do anything. You've got it made. And it was pretty much how, it, that was the case. Um, once they got to the horses, it took nothing to make their horses do the same thing that their mules did. If, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't understand your mule, you're going to have some issues. That's usually a beginner that, that likes to, to say that. I've had some that were just kind and willing learners, and I had some that, yeah, they, were, they took after the donkey side. Um, but they're, they're really smarter, and you just have to be smarter than them and, and outsmart them. A mule's smarter than a horse. And I'll give you a, for instance, if you're riding a mule down a trail and you see a little plastic bag on the trail, he look at it and ride on. And you can move that when you ride back and he still looks where it was. 
he remembers where that was. The horse ride back time or two, he done forgot where it was, but that mule remember where that bag was maybe a month later. And they just, they, they catch on to stuff quicker, the good stuff, but also the bad stuff. If you teach them something they don't need to know or something that's in the wrong direction, they're gonna be, they're gonna remember that better too. And it might be harder to get out of it. But if you'll take you a good mule and train him when he's young, just like you had a $10,000 horse, you'll have a good mule. Back in your history books, there's uh, you'll see people before we come to the states that rode mules in the old countries. Uh, but it more got underway, I think, when they they brought the good jacks in the United States and crossed on the mares we had here. I think the Queen of Spain gave George Washington two jacks back in 1700 and something. Got to cross them with uh, good mares, raised mules, and they played a big part in the. Uh, the farming industry and the moving west when everybody went west. And our country years ago was made up of small farms and everybody growed tobacco, everybody had mules and they worked their tobacco with their mules and they hauled it off with their mules. They done what they needed to do because each farmer had a small crop and they'd all go in together and swap work with their teams uh, putting up tobacco and putting it out and putting it up for that matter. That's how they made their living. And there were certain kinds of mules. You used your bigger mules up north. And then in our country, it was sort of a medium-sized mule. And then you go south from us. In the southern states, they had what they called a cotton mule, which was a mule a little shorter, more compact, that could handle the work. And then they had what they called a sugar mule they used down in uh, Louisiana. It was a big raw bone mule that could stand the heat to do the sugar cane with. And then they had the smaller mules in the Coal mines in eastern Kentucky and Virginia and West Virginia, that was a smaller mule about like that, and they'd use them in them shafts to pull that coal out. So the mules have done a lot of things for this country that's just kind of forgot about, I guess. I mean, I think they've been a they've beast of burden. They've been used, you know, and, and now they're being used a little. And some of the Amish people still work them, but mostly they're for recreation. And the government still uses them in the park service where there's no, where you can't take motorized vehicles past certain points. We've had mules that you could rope on, you could do hunter jumper on, you could ride in Western Pleasure and rain. And if you had a horse, you can only do one of those classes. You know, he'd be a great hunter jumper and he would not be a very good roper at all. I mean, but the mules, if you got an athletic mule, you can do just about anything with him. Things change and, and mules are not so much for work anymore except for what the Amish work, but you've got a saddle type mule that people like to go camping and riding with where some people take their boats, go to the lake, they take their mules and go camping in national parks and have trail rides and stuff like that. They really broke the ride, they broke it on the outside the past two days, he's thrown the rope on it. You either rode the three of them yesterday, hot dog, traffic safe, and gentlemen, you want to show you a group of you right here for the whole family. Two and a quarter high. <laughs> I've been to horse sales and I've been to mule sales and these like they have a little Friday night horse sale somewhere. If you leave a saddle laying out there on the out there on that rail. 
you go do something, you come back, it might not be there. But if you go to a good mule sale and you leave it laying there, 90% of the time it'll be there whenever you get to go back to get it. The good people. It's a lot of good fellowship. We've got people come in from different states and uh, a lot of times this is the only time they'll see each other. You know, so it's kind of like a, a big reunion to them. You know, uh, seems like to me, you know, just for me observing, uh, they, uh, they get a visit and uh, do a lot of trading. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been a really a good experience for me being a, uh, here at the Agriplex, you know, to be able to be around these people. They're good folks. Step up, me. Anytime you get a bunch of mule people together, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, if you need something that's, that's going to have stamina that your horse doesn't, a mule's going to work for you. If you want something, you'll stand out. And, and, and the people that do mules, their personality stands out. They're just different than the average horse person. 